What's up, everybody? Um, lately, there's a lot of articles when it comes to um, the bias happening with investment funds, VCs, angel investors from outside investing mostly in, in Westerner uh, owners than, than African owners. Uh, but the interesting thing I want to emphasize and talk about is what are the solutions? And then, you know, is it, is it a real problem? And what, what are the different solutions that, that can be incorporated to minimize that? Because at the end of the day, if we look at the data um, that we have so far, unfortunately, when it comes to uh, innovation, African, whether it's renewable energy, different sectors, agriculture, we still import so much more than we, we produce. And that's a very interesting topic. Check it out. Henry Yakarundi, the innovator behind innovative, innovative entrepreneur from Rwanda. Un plaisir d'accueillir aujourd'hui Henri Nyakarundi. Pour en parler, l'équipage reçoit son concepteur, Monsieur Henri Nyakarundi. There's been a lot of articles uh, for the last few months now with data collected, uh, different stories. And, and, and I'm not here to, to judge or say what is wrong, what is right, what is wrong. That, that's not my job. My job is, you know, what I, I love to do is, is, is to find solution, how to raise up, you know, African entrepreneur, especially, especially in the innovation space. Uh, which is lacking when you look at renewable energy stats, you know, less than 3% of, of, of companies in the renewable energy doing business in Africa, are not, uh, you know, are African, less than 3%. And I can go on and on and on, but, but we also have to be realistic. We, we also have, you know, to, to, to use uh, some common sense. Those VCs from Western countries, that's their money. That's their money. Right, you know, they, they 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 get, you know, they they earn that money, and they have the right to use it for whatever they want to use it for. They don't necessarily have to uh, invest in African entrepreneur. And then I always I also thought about it. I was like, well, you know, most people invest based on trust. And who do you trust in a in a market that you don't know any, you know, you don't know much, you don't know the culture, you don't know much about anything. You want to invest in people that you feel comfortable with, that you can trust, people from your own communities, you know, from your own countries, etc. So it, it's logical that, you know, most VCs from different countries, especially Western countries, invest in Western entrepreneur doing business in Africa. So I don't see that, uh, that alone as an issue. Uh, the issue is a narrative, right? The narrative that those companies do claiming that the African entrepreneur or, or African businesses, should I say, you know, uh, that's the, that's the issue. The issue is the narrative, the narrative that is, is, is not true. And, and they get away with it because, you know, um, most of the, the, the African government support those things. Um, they don't see any problem because they, they, they look at it as an investment coming in. They don't see the long-term you know, funding going out. Billions and billions of dollars come out of Africa. Uh, some of it illicitly and, and, and others, you know, legally, but that's just the reality. If a foreign investors come in to invest in, in something, please believe it. You know, they want their proceeds to go back to where they're from. They don't want that money to stay in the country. So that, that's just the reality. And that's a reality that everybody knows, but nobody's doing anything about it, right? But going back to what I was saying, you know, and, and I always use this analogy. When we travel, when I moved to the States, for example, first thing I did was looking for Africans in Atlanta community. I can feel comfortable. I can trust. I can mingle, understand what's going on in those communities. I didn't go and look for, you know, uh, communities that I, I, I didn't think I can relate. I mean, that's just human nature. So we need to take that in consideration. Now, what can we do to fix this problem? Because it is a problem. 
We talk about the fourth industrial revolution that we're not even participating massively. We are not, right? How many unicorn African companies do you know in the innovation space today? I, I don't know any. I'm talking about unicorn, right? I don't know any, but I can list you at least three or four uh, unicorn of companies doing business in Africa with entities outside Africa, you know, and, and most of their business in Africa that are unicorn status, right? So let, let's not kid ourselves, right? We, 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 need to, we need to be, uh, um, how can I say, we need to be honest with ourselves and realize there is a problem. Because a lot of people I talk to, they say, no, um, it's okay, you know, they're investing, they're helping. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disputing any of that. Foreign invest, investment is needed, but it has to be targeted. And we have to look at the short term and the long term. It, when, when, when the government, uh, when the U.S. government make a call for, for a project, do you know one of the requirements? You have to be a U.S. citizen. I'm sure it's the same in Asia. Africa is the only continent, as of today, the only continent that anyone can come in, do business just because you bring a few million dollars, you know, and you're given the red carpet treatment, right? Um, and you don't have to partner. Now, some countries varies with others, but at, at the end of the day, most of them give you red carpet treatment, you know, tax exemptions, all these uh, benefits that in the long run, it doesn't benefit us. It doesn't, right? Agricultural sector, why we don't have machinery manufacturing? Drone technology, yes, we, we banking on software developers, yes, but where are those software? We're still importing software development uh, uh, in most, especially uh, uh, not just the private sector, but, um, governments, any sector. I remember talking to a Nigerian entrepreneur who, who's building towers for, for um, um, towers for telecom companies. You know, he's the only tower manufacturer in Nigeria for the Western, Western market, uh, West African market. And he was telling me he's getting taxed more than imported products. I mean, what kind of logic is that, man? What kind of logic is that? I've been back on the continent for seven years now. Has there been improvement? Yes, yes. I mean, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't still be here if there haven't been any improvement. But are we moving fast enough? No, we're not, man. We still consider the, 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 <laughs> the what you call that? Uh, when, when, when we talk about, when the world's talking about innovation and all, you don't see Africa that much, except the M-Pesa. It's been a 20 year story. Right, but anyway, let's go back to our, our, our chicken, as we say. You know, what solution do we have? But the solution is there. We just gotta implement, and that's a leadership thing. That's 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 our government leadership that has to take those decisions. Because as individual, you know, yes, we can unite and, and raise our voice and all those things. That's why I do those vlogs. But you know, I, I'm at the bottom of the food chain, so yeah, some people do listen and all, but. The, the bottom line is governments have to take initiatives. You know, we can't blame foreign VCs for our misfortune or, 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 or the lack of, you know, um, technology company growing faster in Africa. We can't blame them. That's not their fault. It's our fault. We need to take the blame. That's the only way we're going to change. We, we need to stop pointing fingers and all that. Oh, they get, this company got this much money. Oh, I'm doing the same thing. I'm not. But that, that's, not, that's, that's, that's not their problem. As I said, that's their money. They can use their money the way they want, right? We need to put together policies that minimize those things, right? We need, government needs to put policies that force investors to invest in local companies. There need to be policies where if you import a product, um, the department, the company is all has to prove that they can't find that solution locally, regionally, or on the continent first before they go outside, you know, and we are guilty of that. We can't even, I can't even blame anybody. I mean, uh, so it needs to be that policy and it needs to be a, a training mindset um, where local products does not mean it's bad product. 
That's another issue we have. All these things has to work accordingly. And finally, we need to have mechanism. And I think that's the, the most important. We need to have mechanism that facilitate export of solution on the continent not beyond the continent on the continent right because the continent need is very specific to africa right if you're developing a product for example in the agricultural sector um, to help small farmers um, cultivate um, their, their 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 land much faster you know mechanization as we talking you don't need a big tractor tractor when you know that 70 percent of the, the the farmers have less than five acres of land you know so you don't need a big big tractor you need to develop a solution that is locally uh focused on on on, on that problematic and that's what we're lacking we're lacking of those things the mechanism today is we beg it. we go to the west we ask grants we ask funding and then we, we we surprise ourselves that those money never reached to the to the people it's supposed to reach it you know and, and 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 guess what that's their money that's their money and as long as we keep asking for their money they're going to do what they want to do with their money you know we need to start using our own money and final and last thing, and that's something I've been researching a lot lately, is crowd investing. There is huge potential in crowd investing, especially tapping into the diaspora, you know, putting tools together that can match, you know, uh, people looking to invest in companies and finding and, and vetting companies on the ground. And I truly believe that's the only way that we're going to catch up with the, the rest of the world. All right, man, I hope you enjoyed uh, the, um, this vlog. But let me know what you think, man. Do you agree? If you don't agree, why? why, why what's the differentiator? And, and if you do agree or you, you think it's missing something, what is it? I mean, th this is a time not to talk, but of course to take action. I hate talking, but I like to point out some solutions. So if somebody out there listening and looking at that problem, you know, I, please let me know because I'm, I, I love supporting no one person can solve everything or a group of person can solve everything but together we can really really uh achieve what we're supposed to achieve to put africa on the map man and and finally be economically independent peace